and gentlemen, we welcome you to Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln. Spencer County, Indiana, in my eighth year. It was a wild region, with many bears and other wild animals still in the woods. There I grew up. I was large for my age, and had an axe put into my hands at once. And from that to my 23rd year, was almost constantly handling that most useful instrument. I think that the aggregate of all my schooling did not amount to one year. At 21, I came to Illinois. Thought of trying to study law. Rather thought I could not succeed at that without better education. I borrowed some law books, took them home, and went at it in good earnest. In 1854, the law profession had almost superseded the thought of politics in my mind when the repeal of the Missouri Compromise aroused me as I had never been before. What I have done since then is pretty well known. If any personal description of me is thought desirable, it may be said I am in height, six feet, four inches, nearly, lean in flesh, weighing on an average of 180 pounds, dark complexion, with coarse black hair and gray eyes, and no other marks or brands recollected. Yours very truly, A. Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln became president faced with the terrible threat of civil war, a thing he dreaded, yet a calamity he was prepared to meet if he must. Without you, Constitution is only a piece of paper. I know there is a God, and that he hates injustice and slavery. I see the storm coming. I know his hand is in it. If he has a place, work for me. And I think he has. I believe I'm ready. And with God's help, I shall not fail. April 12, 1861, Fort Sumter. 
but Gavin spoke for war. Civil war, violent, devastating. Now had come the reckoning, the supreme test that would decide whether a republic founded on liberty could survive the terrible strife of men's passions. score and seven years ago our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal now we are engaged in a great civil war testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure Ten brief sentences, so simple, so direct. Abraham Lincoln had not expected his words to live beyond their temporary moment, but time and history would dictate otherwise. And so today, his Gettysburg Address is immortal, a rich and treasured part of our country's heritage. tribute here not to a man who lived a century ago, but to an individual who lives today in the hearts of all freedom-loving people. His prophetic words are as valid for our time as they were for his. And now, the skills of the sculptor and the talents of the artist will let us relive great moments with Mr. Lincoln. against tyranny. Our reliance 
is in the love of liberty, which God has planted in our bosoms. Our defense is in the preservation of the spirit which prizes liberty as the heritage of all men, in all lands, everywhere. Destroy this spirit and you have planted the seeds of despotism around your own doors. At what point shall we expect the approach of danger? By what means shall we fortify against it? Shall we expect some transatlantic military giant to step the ocean and crush us with a blow? Never. All the armies of Europe, Asia, and Africa combined could not by force take a drink from the Ohio or make a track on the Blue Ridge in a trial of a thousand years. At what point then? is the approach of danger to be expected. I answer, if it ever reach us, it must spring from amongst us. It cannot come from abroad. If destruction be our lot, we ourselves must be its author and finisher. As a nation of free men, we must live through all times or die by suicide. Neither let us be slandered from our duty by false accusations against us, nor frightened from it by the menaces of destruction to the government, nor of dungeons to ourselves. Let us have faith that right makes might. And in that faith, let us to the end dare to do our duty as we understand it.